Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 240 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. And this is such an important topic. I'm so glad you're here. This time of the year, this question always comes up for new teachers. I've talked to so many new teachers over the last several months who've been feeling completely overwhelmed and defeated by the question that's coming up in your mind, likely if you're listening to this episode. What if I'm actually not cut out for this teaching thing after all? So if you've been feeling frustrated or discouraged that after four years of education and training, you either don't feel prepared to set up your own classroom or you've taught for a year or two and it's so much harder than you thought it was going to be and you need some help. There are likely so many things about having your own classroom that you wish you had learned before you were thrown into the deep end as so many of us are and just told, don't worry, this is normal. You'll just figure it out. If you can see me right now, I'm doing air quotes, right? It's so frustrating. And if you're feeling this way, you are not alone. I felt exactly the same way. It was more than 20 years ago and I still have this visceral memory. Remember walking down that hallway, the key to my first classroom in my hand, I had always always wanted to be a teacher. I taught my little brother Chris to read before he was even in kindergarten. It was my life's calling. And as I walked down that hallway with the key to my very own classroom in my hands, my stomach was this mess of butterflies and excitement. I had literally waited a lifetime for that moment. And as I turned the key and opened the door to my very own classroom, I still remember looking around and seeing those four bare walls. And the classroom was completely empty except for like a few boxes of junk from (laughs) like last, the last teacher had been in that room. And I suddenly felt this complete overwhelm just hit me like a ton of bricks. I sat down and I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. And I remember thinking, I wish someone would just sit me down and tell me what to do. Like, this is not the first time someone's ever done this, right? Why doesn't someone just sit me down and give me a checklist? And I had gone to a great university. I had excelled in my student teaching. I'd even taught overseas. This should have been pretty easy. And I kept asking my colleagues what I should do to prepare, but I got blanket responses and laughs from all of the experienced teachers. And they would say things like, oh, don't worry, you'll figure it out. Plan some fun things to do in the first few days. But every day I felt like I was failing my students. I literally felt like I had no idea what to do. And eventually when I was ready to start my master's two years later, which I don't recommend, I was still a new teacher, was still in the heart of trying to figure out how to teach myself. I decided to focus on the topic, beginning teachers, what's the problem here? And I was shocked by what I learned and by what the research said, especially since the implementation of No Child Left Behind in the United States and the intense focus on testing in schools, nearly every education decision at the local school level involves teaching to the standards, right? So this excessive focus on testing and standards has led to a lack of focus on the practical guidance and support that would help first-year teachers stay afloat. First-year teachers have one basic goal in mind, survival, right? Experienced educators tend to forget what it was like when they were new to the classroom. They tend to get out of touch with what new teachers really need. And a lot of what new teachers need can only be provided through supportive interaction with veteran teachers. So help from a trained, caring mentor is a crucial ingredient in helping new teachers survive their first year. But mentoring programs are being eliminated in many states because of budget shortfalls. In California, state-funded mentoring programs have been eliminated entirely. 
And even when mentor programs are well-staffed, mentors can't help first-year teachers unless they understand and provide the kinds of information and support that new professionals really need. For mentoring to truly help new teachers, the agendas for mentoring sessions need to come more from the new teacher than from the mentor. A mentor is there to make the teacher's first year easier, not to teach the new professional how to teach or to push the school district's agenda. And I'm going to link to an article that you might find helpful about what new teachers really need. So because I was a relatively new teacher who had finally figured it all out through trial and error because I didn't have access to a mentor who would have made it much easier, I vowed to help other new teachers so they wouldn't have to go through what I had. So I wrote the book based on my master's research. I got it copied at our local Staples and I presented that information at our local teachers convention. And my dear friend Lorraine was at the booth and she said to me after, what did you do? We had sold out the book. I was shocked at the depth of the need, and I could not believe how packed my sessions were. It led me to presenting at conferences across the country, and I remember at one particular convention center, we had this huge convention center, and I was sitting at a booth outside of the convention uh, center, the main hallway, and I was signing copies of my book. And I remember saying, I saw this line of teachers that snaked all the way down the convention center. And I remember thinking, I wonder who they're waiting for. They were waiting for my book. I could not believe it. I thought I was presenting new new teachers, but I had hundreds of teachers in my sessions, many of them who had been teaching for one, two, three, five years or more. And After my sessions, I kept getting order forms in the mailbox for months after I had no idea how many teachers had been struggling with the same thing I was and that likely you're struggling with too. I'd never had enough books to satisfy the need and I realized this problem is much bigger than I first even really thought. I eventually realized that my university education did not and actually could not prepare us for what you're going to face in the classroom every day on a daily basis. I eventually got that book published through a publisher, but I stopped selling the book because I realized that I was limited with a physical book to just explaining what to do. I couldn't give you all the resources you needed to actually implement what I was teaching you. So if you're wondering, how can I get my hands on a copy of that book? That book has since become the Ready for School Academy because inside the academy, I can not only teach you what you need to do in a way that I really wish someone would have taught me, but I can show you how, and I can give you all the resources you need so you can implement it all before the busy school year begins. And I can mentor you throughout the process. So you have someone to ask questions of as you go through the content. And if you've never taught full time in your own classroom before now, please believe me when I tell you that you will never have been busier or more tired in your life than you will be in those first few months of school, especially in your first year in your classroom. If you've taught for a year or two, you know what I'm talking about. So inside the academy, I teach you all the things that I wish someone would have come into my classroom that first summer and walked me through how to do. And it's actually It's not easy, but it can be more streamlined than you even realize. I teach you how to set up and organize your first classroom. We talk about how to lay out furniture, how to think through wall space. We go in depth about ensuring that your classroom has a great flow to it to maximize learning. I walk you through how to set up a crystal clear classroom management plan so you can lay that foundation to prevent the classroom management challenges you might have experienced in your student teaching or in your first years or two or three years of teaching. I walk you through how to set up your teacher planner, what to do, how to set up a system to clearly and systematically collect and track student data. I give you almost done for you first week of school plans so you know exactly what to do in that first hour. Nobody showed me that. What to do in that first hour on that first day of school, that first morning, that first day, and that entire first week. And I show you exactly what to do to set yourself up for success with parents from the beginning of the school year and how to establish and maintain relationships with parents, how to feel confident and prepared with an amazing meet the teacher night. The point of the entire academy is that it's called Ready for School Academy because I am helping you to be ready for school. I focus primarily on showing you 
how to lay that foundation for the school year to be exceptional and how to be successful and exactly what to do on that first morning, that first day, that first week. And I give you the systems you need to feel confident with parents. So at the time of recording this, I am so grateful and thrilled that I've already had more than 1,700 teachers graduate from the academy, and it absolutely thrills me to hear the kind of feedback I've gotten from teachers who did not need to struggle the way I had. So I'm going to give you a taste of what some of my teachers are saying, and it just makes me so happy and so excited for them. Megan says, the Ready for School Academy is amazing. It's such a worthwhile investment in a teacher's career. Dr. Lori, thank you for everything. From the bottom of my heart, I will forever be thankful to have been blessed with a fabulous teacher mentor like you. I can't wait to share all of the knowledge and resources from the Academy with my colleagues and students. Kelsey says, the Ready for School Academy was such a welcome surprise investment. I got way more than I thought I thought I signed up for when I realized all of the resources that were included and the incredible advice and tips. I feel so much more confident in my readiness to start the school year and my ability to make it a great year for myself and my students. It's an investment that I absolutely do not regret and would shout from the mountaintops suggesting any new teacher to sign up. Um, This is Emily. She says, I started the Ready for School Academy in the summer between my first and second full years, and it made such a difference. It's detailed and broken down so well in a way that helped me feel and be successful throughout the year. I recommended the Academy to other new teachers because it helped me so much. Jill says, the Ready for School Academy has helped me prepare in all the ways my college courses did not. As a student teacher, I did not get to see all the preparation that goes into the weeks before school starts and how to establish a functional classroom from the beginning. This course has taken the new teacher anxiety away and taught me how to organize and prepare for success. Thank you so much. Kelly says, this experience has taught me more than four years in college. I feel a hundred times better about starting my career after this program. And finally, Juelia says, I have not only learned so much through the Ready for School Academy, but had so much fun doing it. I genuinely looked forward to each Saturday morning that I spent this summer sitting down with my cup of coffee and digging into all the things I had to think through to make this school year successful. The confidence that you gain through the Academy is worth the price alone. I've recently started my second year of teaching second grade and completed the Academy this summer. This year has already flowed so much more smoothly smoothly thanks to the plans, expectations, and materials that the Academy guided me through preparing. My students know what to expect when they come to school each day, and I feel comfortable in the fact that my students know what I expect from them. I could not say enough positive things about the program. It was worth the time and every penny. Thanks, Dr. Lori. So now what? It felt so good to set up hundreds of new teachers for success in the first week of school. And I was like, awesome. They're good. They're set up for the year. They're going to be golden. I was certain that schools would provide mentorship and support from there. And I was shocked when they started coming back, needing more support by October. Why? Because here's the thing. Even though I teach you how to set up routines and start the year with a clear and consistent classroom management plan, which is the essential foundation to any classroom community, staying consistent with your classroom management throughout the year can be super challenging. So I started getting questions like, how do I implement natural consequences consistently? What do I do when kids are not following the expectations I've set up in the classroom? What do I do when a kid throws a chair across the room? How do I prepare for parent-teacher conferences? How do I get my weekends back and not spend 24 hours a day? How do I streamline my planning? Is it really possible to get my planning done within contracted hours? My answer is yes, and I can show you how. (laughs) How do I continue to build and deepen relationships with my students throughout the year? How do I help my super challenging kids? What do I do to teach them conflict resolution skills? How do I help kids deal from trauma and grief? I'm not a therapist. And that's why I created the Classroom Management Club. 
So I created the club because too many teachers were trying to figure all of this out alone. Often when they found themselves on much less supportive teams than they had hoped for, or they were the only new-ish teacher at their grade level, and because too many teachers started asking themselves if they were cut out for teaching after all. So just to go back for a moment, the academy will set you up for success. It will lay the foundation for you. It is absolutely essential and it's everything that I needed to set up a classroom when I first started teaching and that I refined and made incredible in the 10 years that I was in the classroom. But as October starts to round the corner, it isn't your fault if you start feeling overwhelmed and if you're wondering if you want to stay in teaching for the long haul. You were really dealt an unfair hand with COVID thrown into the mix, and you weren't prepared for the intense social and emotional needs you're seeing in your classroom every day. But you don't have to do this alone. The club is a space where I'm listening and where I'm creating resources and practical trainings in response to what you want and need each month. So each month inside the club, I poll our members to ask what you would like help with. Each month you get access to new social and emotional resources that you can grab and go with inside your classroom so you can implement social and emotional learning and restorative teaching practices in your classroom in 15 minutes a day. So you can both deepen those relationships that you established at the beginning of the year. You can deepen those relationships throughout the year and prevent the classroom management challenges that typically come up when kids don't feel worthy and they try to get your attention in unhealthy and unproductive ways, like throwing a chair across the room or punching a classmate when they don't get their way. Research has shown that students participating in social and emotional learning programs showed improved classroom behavior and increased ability to manage stress and depression and better attitudes about themselves, others, and school. Now, this is something that you need to do throughout the school year that I can't give you when I set you up for success for the school year. This is curriculum you're going to need each month to work with your students on this throughout the year. But elementary schools that have implemented SEL, social and emotional learning, have seen a 62% reduction in violence. That's amazing. 51% fewer bullying incidents. So if you've seen that in your classroom this past year, that is something that may be significantly reduced by SEL. Absenteeism reduced by 28%, a 73% shrinkage in suspensions, and 85% fewer disciplinary referrals. That's amazing. So if you aren't already teaching SEL in your classroom, I encourage you to consider enrolling in the Classroom Management Club after you've completed the academy so you can get access to this curriculum and test it out in your classroom before the end of the school year. If you're teaching right now and you want to try this out, I really encourage you to enroll right away so you can test it out, learn how it works, and so you can hit the ground running and feel confident in teaching it when you get started again in the fall. You also get access every month to four classroom tested classroom management hacks that work. You've heard me talk about hacks so many times on this podcast. You get all of them included in the club so you can keep things fresh and engaging for your students throughout the school year. You also get practical PD based on what our members need and want. You get seasonal resources and you get opportunities to ask me all your classroom management questions each month. And the best part about this is you get ongoing access to all of the support all year long for as long as you need it. So the reason I created this podcast episode is because I've had so many teachers reach out and ask me, what is the difference between the academy and the club? I've also created a downloadable PDF that I'll link to in the show notes for this episode so you can see a chart of what the difference is between the academy and the club. So if you're at the point in your career where you're wondering if you're cut out for teaching after all, I encourage you not to throw away four years of college. I questioned if I was cut out for teaching as well. I remember how I felt when I got the keys to my first classroom, wondering if I was cut out for this. I remember struggling in that first year or two and thinking, 
I feel like I'm failing every single day. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. And the reason I questioned myself was not because I wasn't capable. It wasn't because I wasn't talented. It wasn't because I wasn't cut out for teaching. It was because I didn't have the skills, mentorship, and support that I needed to be successful. I'm giving you that opportunity. I so believe in the work that I've created for you. Please don't throw away what you've already started. You've probably invested, if you're listening to this, at least four years of your life into a degree and into a passion that you started because you absolutely loved it and you you couldn't imagine doing something else. So please don't throw that away. I so believe in what I've created for you. I know it's going to be helpful for you. I have gained so much confidence in this academy and in the club as I've been creating it because I've seen the feedback. I've seen the amazing results that teachers are getting and I've seen their confidence grow and their love of teaching come back again. And I want that for you. So I invite you to figure out what you need, what resonates with you and what would be best for you. And I'm here to support you in your journey, wherever you are. So for the first time ever, I'm trying something new this year. I love experimenting. I'm always talking about, let it all be a big experiment, right? Especially with your classroom management, try things out in your classroom, see what works, see what doesn't and figure out what works for you. So for the first time ever this year, you can enroll in the academy and in the club anytime. I'm keeping the doors open to both the academy and to the club. So you can get the support you need when you need it. So I'm going to leave the doors open until the summer. If you're curious about the Academy and you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to register for my free masterclass. If you haven't taken it already, it's called what they don't teach you in college about preparing for the, your first classroom. And I'll tell you more about the Academy and how you can enroll towards the end of that masterclass. All right, my friends, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. And please, if you're questioning, if you're cut out for teaching, please give yourself permission to get the support you need so that you can enjoy this career and stay in it for the long haul. I want that for you so much. All right, my friends, have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Come join us and I'll support you every step of the way. Bye for now. 